he crossed the red chamber and became the fourth son of Jia Shi, Jia Shan, who did not exist. He somehow provoked Jia Baoyu, and in order not to be bullied, he embarked on the road of being a supreme minister. Jia Mu. You are unfilial. Yes, I am unfilial. Jia Shan silently took out the emperor's decree, revealing three large characters in front of Jia Mu. I am unfilial. Jia Mu's face suddenly collapsed. Keywords of the novel. En Shaoho of the Red Chamber with no pop-ups, download the complete text of En Shaoho of the Red Chamber, and read the latest chapters of En Shaoho of the Red Chamber. Chapter 1. Getting Beaten. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 Getting Beaten in the Sixth Year of the Reign of Emperor Chinda. It was just getting warmer. In Rongwa Mansion, there was a small yard not far from the main house where Jia Shi lived in the east. The small yard was neat and tidy, with complete functions. It was wonderful to build it. Several women passed by and stopped walking. Some people, born without that kind of fate, still gather in the old lady's house. What is the identity of Baoyi, and what is his identity? They should not be beaten if they rob Baoyi's things. Sister, don't say anything about it. The people living in that room are the ones at our master's fingertips, so it's not easy to provoke them. So what can we do? I'm from a commoner background, and now I've offended the old lady. I've been punished and even removed all the servants from the yard. Dot. A few women were openly and loudly chewing on the back of Jia Shan's tongue at the edge of Jia Shan's yard. All that was said fell into the ears of Jia Shan, who had just woken up. Angry and disregarding her image, Jia Shan picked up the kettle from the table in her lewd attire and limped to the door. The woman who suffered from the plague is cursing outside, but if you believe it or not, I'll tear your mouths apart. Accompanied by the crisp sound of porcelain fragments shattering, the beautiful national essence resounds. A few women chewing their tongues on the edge of Jia Shan's yard quickly fled. Jia Shan wanted to catch up with them and slap them a few times alone. However, he was injured in the buttocks now, his legs and feet were inconvenient, and his attendants were not available. He could only go back to his room and lie on the bed, feeling angry alone. He is Jia Shan, the fourth son of Jia Shi who did not exist in the Red Mansion two years ago. He has been fascinated by the characters in the Red Chamber for a long time. When he first crossed over, he found out that it was the Red Chamber and was extremely happy. However, when memories were transmitted to his brain and he was not happy for long, he suddenly realized his physical identity as the illegitimate son of the Jia family in Rongwa Mansion. Not to mention the tragedy of Thousand Red Caves and One Yen Sharing Sorrow, I remember that after the Rongwa Mansion copied the house, the end of the big house was not good. Wang Shifeng released Inzi Wallet to collect the lawsuit and was arrested. Xiao's sister was sold. Jia Shi and Jiao Yen were accused of being involved in the former prince's rebellion and pulled off his head because he went to business in Pingan Island. One by one, there is no good outcome. As a member of the big house, he did not mention the fate of the big house's concubines in the Red Chamber. However, the rebellion was a great crime to kill the nine ethnic groups. It was expected that the end would not be good, and he went with Jia Shi and Jiao Yen almost every time. Now, as a child, what he can do is not yet waiting for him to think, and soon he is tripped by the reality of food and clothing. Upon arriving here, he was surprised to find that he couldn't even meet his basic needs, thanks to Lady Xing's gift. His mother came from a farming family. All the people in his family were scholars. His father was seriously ill, and his younger brother was too young to support the high medical expenses. In order to pay for his mother's promise of marriage, he was hired into Rongwa Mansion and became Jia Shi's wife. What is a concubine room? It is a concubine room that can be elevated to the main chamber at any time after the death of the main chamber. It is also one of the three wives and four concubines. Jia Mu's actions are blatantly slapping Xing Fu's face and warning Xing Madam. Mrs. Xing, 
who dared not hold a grudge against Jia's mother, held a grudge against her until her mother passed away when she gave birth to him. However, Mrs. Xing still couldn't calm down. At that time, Jia Xi didn't have a heart for his commoner son. There was no protection from adults. Under the guidance of Madame Xing, the servants of Rongwa Mansion treated him badly everywhere. They didn't say anything about his monthly money and wouldn't even give him a full meal. It was very lucky that little Jia Shan could live to see him through. In my memory, his maternal uncle studied at the Guozijian and became a famous teacher, achieving the title of Juren. He was also a Jiyuan in the Jiangnan region, and his future was limitless. After enduring for half a month, he became angry and, based on his original memory, dragged his five-year-old body out of the Jia mansion, asking and inquiring all the way. After going through layers of danger, he went to the Imperial Academy and mustered up the courage to report to his aunt to support him. His choice was right, and to this day he still remembers his aunt holding him in a fit of anger and running to Rongwa Mansion to question him. After this incident, Mrs. Xing was scolded. Jia's mother sold a group of servants. Jia Xi paid more attention to him, a commoner. The people of Rongwa Mansion dared not bully him any more. Finally, he had a full meal, which undoubtedly made his situation better. Just because he takes the initiative not to provoke others doesn't mean he's really easy to bully. The door was knocked on. Fourth master, miss asked me to deliver the medicine. A crisp voice sounded from outside the door, and Snow Wild Goose stood outside the door, following Lin Daiyu's instructions to come and deliver medicine to Jia Shan. Come in. Accompanied by Jia Shan's voice, the Snow Goose pushed the door and entered. Jia Shan remained in a position and lay on the bed, her bloody buttocks showing an unbearable expression in the Snow Goose's eyes. Is Sister Lin okay? Due to Lin Daiyu's plea for mercy at the time, Jia Shan took the initiative to care about Lin Daiyu's situation. Miss, everything is fine. It's just that the fourth master has endured the hardships for nothing and feels quite uncomfortable. Let me bring you the medicine. Looking at the medicine in her hand, Jia Shan let out a heavy sigh as she remembered the tearful appearance of Lin Daiyu at that time. Sister Lin, as long as she's okay. Jia Shan sighed and asked Xuan to go back, so as not to bring her any more trouble. This is the sorrow of the illegitimate son. Where did the situation arise? His maternal uncle and Lin Daiyu's father, Lin Ruhai, were from the same family. Lin Ruhai saw that all the letters he received from the capital were good news and not bad news, and rarely mentioned Lin Daiyu's daily life in Rongwa Mansion. Feeling uneasy, he sent someone to inquire in the capital and found out that Lin Daiyu was not doing well. The people of Rongwa Mansion appeared to respect Daiyu for Jia Mu's reasons, but in reality, they were secretly abusing her and saying bad things about her. Now that Jiang Nan is in danger, he is unable to retrieve Daiyu and can only turn around to seek help. Coincidentally, his uncle returned to his hometown to attend the autumn festival last year and paid his respects at Lin Ruhai's mansion. Lin Ruhai learned about his connections and entrusted his aunt to help deliver letters back and forth. This matter also fell on his shoulders, and on that day he went as usual to deliver a letter to Lin Daiyu. Jia Baoyu saw that he had said a few words to Lin Daiyu, but he couldn't get in and left the door. He went crazy and falsely accused him of stealing his jade. I don't even think about it. His broken jade, which is neither gold nor jade nor agate, is not worth selling for one or two silver, except for Jia Mu and others who treat it as a treasure. Jia Mu, who arrived, saw her precious child with a look of being bullied and scolded him indiscriminately, without giving him any opportunity to explain, accusing him of disrespecting his elder brother. If the charge is crowned, his life is basically half done, and the emperor will not reuse a person with moral flaws. In the end, he was dragged down by his mother and beaten to death, and was saved by Jia Shi who hurried back from outside. After this difficulty, whether intentional or truly destroying his heart, he and his son were both considered to have formed a bond. If he doesn't want to be bullied by Jia Baoyu in this situation, 
he must first not be afraid of Jia's mother and let Jia's mother weigh it when she touches him. Jia Lian casually pushed the door in with a bottle of medicine. It's not that my brother said, what are you constantly going to the old lady's house for? It made Bao Yu crazy and even got beaten up for nothing. Jia Shan withdrew from the tangled thoughts and silently looked at Jia Lian. Well, this is the medicine your sister Dot in Dot Law asked me to deliver to you. Putting down the medicine, Jia Lian swept around Jia Shan's room and saw no servant serving him. After sitting for a while, Jia Lian frowned. Jia's mother was too ruthless. She fought so hard and refused to be served, which left Jia Shan on her own. Munshin has arrived, and we kindly request your support. Munshin will work hard to write it well. Requesting votes, requesting investments, please, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 Funchi Wei Na Ren You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 2 Fengqi Wei Na Ren Jia Lian took off Jia Shan's pants and personally helped Jia Shan apply medicine. After applying the medicine, Jia Shan suddenly felt a chill in her buttocks, and her previously hot and painful buttocks were much better. This is a good medicine that your sister Dot in Dot Law brought to you from a famous trauma doctor in the city. Please feel comfortable after applying it. Jia Lian spoke while Jia Shan listened silently. Second brother, do you want to do something big? Jia Lian glanced at Jia Shan lying in bed and casually said, No one wants to do big things, but you also need to have that ability. I have a way, are you willing to help me? Jia Shan turned her head and stared at Jia Lian with bright eyes. She stayed here for two years, and according to his understanding, the natural landscape of the current period of the Red Chamber Dynasty is in line with the late Ming Dynasty in history. In history, the late Ming Dynasty was in the Little Ice Age, and various natural disasters occurred on the mainland of China. It's currently April, and the weather is getting warmer. Not long ago, he loosened the soil for the flowers he planted in the yard and found many locust eggs. According to the special period of the dynasty, many locust eggs can be found in the courtyard of Gao Men, so there will only be more locust eggs in the fields outside. As expected, a huge locust plague will occur in June, spreading from central Beijing to the north of the Huai River, with similar climates in various northern regions. This is a disaster, and it is also an opportunity for Jia Shan. If done properly, he will soar to the sky. How dare Jia's mother protect Jia Bao Yu then? Jia Lian, who was drugging Jia Shan, lifted his head and was about to say a few words. Jia Shan didn't know the world and the earth, but when he saw Jia Shan's serious expression on her face, he couldn't help but think of the small appearance a few months ago when Jia Shan came to tell him that Feng Jia was not a good steward. At that time, Feng Jie had just become pregnant, and there were more miscellaneous affairs in the Rongguo mansion. Feng Jie was busy every day and almost had a miscarriage. Jia Shan came to tell him that there was a deficit in the Rongguo mansion, and the butler seemed to have a good reputation on the surface, but in reality, he took over an bottomless pit. At first, he didn't believe it. After questioning Feng, he found out that Feng had filled in her own dowry silver for the sake of the vast Rongwa mansion. She had filled in almost all of her dowry silver, but was deceived by the Zhou Rui family and began to have a crooked idea of printing money. Fortunately, he discovered it early, otherwise he would have committed irreparable crimes sooner or later. At that moment, he seemed to have seen Mrs. Wang's face clearly and designed to retrieve most of Feng's dowry. He took the initiative to move back to the East Cross Courtyard from Mrs. Wang, no longer inquiring about anything in the Rongwa mansion, and started his own little life with Feng. Jia Lian swallowed the words to her lips and sat on the chair by Jia Shan's bedside with a smile of flattery. Good brother, please tell me what big deal it is. Jia Shan told Jia Lian without reservation about the possibility of locust infestation. Jia Lian's pupils dilated in shock and he stood up from the chair, trembling and confirming his voice. Spreading rumors that are unfavorable to the court, but the heinous crime of beheading, are you sure this is true? Jia Shan nodded firmly at Jiao Yan. 
almost, just in case, I still need your help to go to the countryside to dig and see. Jiao Yan restrained his emotions. Jia Shan's fact was too big, if it weren't for the heinous crime of beheading. Jia Shan continued to persuade. Second brother, blessings come and go, and blessings come and go. It's impossible to achieve great things without risks. You don't want to be rewarded by the emperor and enjoy the glory of living in this mansion. High officials and high salaries are right in front of him. Jiao Yan, like him, is a supporting presence in this mansion like Jia Baoyu. With an opportunity to launch a counterattack in front of him, he doesn't believe that Jiao Yan won't fall for the trap. Jia Yan's eyes were full of confusion. You make me think again. Putting aside risks and not looking at them, if it's done without mentioning promotion, it's not a problem to make a real mistake for him. He is now sitting as a fifth-rank official who has donated money, with no one under his command not to mention it, even exempting his daily allowances. This official position is really tasteless. Jiao Yan bid farewell to Jia Shan and looked at Jiao Yan's fiery back. A smile curved around Jia Shan's mouth, and halfway through, the rest was left for Jiao Yan to come and find him. As night fell, Jia Yan excitedly returned from digging soil in the village, with uncontrollable excitement in his eyes. My second grandmother, your second grandfather, I'm about to develop. Seeing Feng Jia on the Kong in the room, Jia Yan happily kissed her fiercely, then picked her up and circled around the room. Feng Jia screamed in fear in Jia Yan's arms and hammered Jia Yan hard twice. What's going on? Let me down quickly. Jia Yan put down Feng Jia, took off her shoes, and lay flat on the Kong, unable to suppress her excitement. Feng Jia kicked Jia Yan in disgust. Get up and it's so dirty. Jia Yan rolled and approached Feng Jia, hugging her tightly. Good grandma, please let me take a break. Today, Shan Xiaoxi told me a big deal, and it was really accomplished. It's not a problem to earn you a living in clothes. Feng looked up and down at Jia Yan with suspicion. She didn't know that Shan Xiaoxi had this ability. Feng couldn't help but suspect that Jia Yan had done something bad outside. In a fit of anger, she grabbed Jia Yan's ear and twisted it hard. To be honest with me, where have you been? Don't treat me like a fool. How old is Xiaoxi today? What kind of shield are you using him for? Feng, don't believe it. Time flies, half a month has passed, and rumors outside are spreading more and more widely. Jia Shan was eating the rice from her bowl, feeling a bit anxious. It had been half a month now, and there hasn't been any movement yet. If it's any later, everything might be too late. Fengqi Guard takes people. The Kam Rongwa mansion was disrupted by this harsh sound. The Rongwa mansion was filled with the emperor's spy leaders, and all the people of all ages were taken to the main hall of the Rongwa mansion. Looking at the uniformed spy leader, Jia Baoyu and others, who have always been able to jump, dared not jump anymore. Although the emperor has not yet fully independent governance, he has already revealed his claws and teeth. The Fengqi guard is his claws and teeth, and when interrogating criminals, the methods are cruel and extremely ferocious. Jia Shan stood quietly in the crowd, waiting. Now the news has reached the emperor's ears. That's Jia Shan. Jia Shan stood calmly out of the crowd, her face calm and devoid of fear towards Fengqi guard. The leading Fengqi Wei glanced at Jia Shan and then disdainfully glanced at the old and young people in the entire mansion. The people in this mansion were not as brave as a child. However, this was only his own high opinion. When capturing Jia Shan, he did not treat him favorably just because Jia Shan was still a child. General Jia has offended, torture him. The leader saluted Jia Shi, and Jia Shan was taken away with handcuffs and shackles. Rongwa Mansion started arguing. Bastard, look at that wicked beast you raised. Half a month ago, he disrespected my elder brother and opposed me. It's only been a while since then, and there's been another scandal. He was taken by Fengqi Guard. 
If he's involved in any rebellion, wouldn't it be like he's going to kill Rongua Mansion? On her forehead, Jia Mu leaned on the couch with a two-finger wide plaster inlaid with gems, and scolded Jia Shi with a frightened look. The bystander Jia Yen and Wang Shifeng exchanged a glance, and Wang Shifeng felt a little scared and worried. Jia Yen tightly held Wang Shifeng's hand, and sweat broke out on his forehead. They also participated in the pursuit of wealth and fortune insurance, although the real mastermind behind it was Jia Shan, the couple also got involved and pushed. Jia Shi did not answer his mother's words. Seeing Jia Shi's dead appearance, Jia Mu was gasped for breath by Jia Shi, and the Mandarin duck patted her on the back. Jia Shi, did you listen to me? We Jia family can't stay with this kind of evil. When she recovered from her anger, Jia Mu's old and deep eyes fell on Jia Shi. She knew that he was pretending. If you don't speak, I'll just send someone to remove Jia Shan's name from the family tree, said Jia Mu with a gloomy face, no, mother. Jia Shi stopped him. Why not? What's the point of keeping such a wicked obstacle? Jia's mother sternly questioned Jia Shi. She didn't like Jia Shan. First, Jia Shan was a commoner. Second, she was too strong and totally out of control. Staying in Jia's house would sooner or later become a disaster and challenge her authority. Jia Shi was silent. There was no airtight wall in the world. He knew everything about Jia Shan's plot with Jia Lian. The rumor could spread so quickly, and there were also his handwriting in it. It was about the honor and disgrace of the big house, and nothing could go wrong. If my mother insists on expelling Jia Shan, she can simply let me and my second brother separate. Anyway, you don't like me either. Jia Shi stood up from the ground and said the hardest words he had ever said to his mother. Jia's mother was so angry that she turned around and everyone opposed her, not listening to her anymore. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Jia Shi You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Jia Shi When Jia Shi said the words of separation, Rongwa Mansion was in turmoil. Jia's mother shouted that Jia Shi was going to sue him for his wickedness. Jia Shi sat coldly watching Jia Mu perform. He had heard this for more than a hundred times. When he was young, he was young, and there was still a trace of rebellion in his heart. In the face of many injustices, he threatened it with a little resistance. Now he also sees it through. Children and grandchildren have their own blessings, and if they have the ability, they can go and sue. In this capital, just one fifth-grade worker from Jia Zheng's Ministry of Works is not enough to support the prosperity of the entire Rongwa prefecture in the capital. If he really falls, the prosperity of Rongwa Mansion will come to an end. For this Jia mother, she has a clear mind, but she does not allow the rights of anyone in this mansion to surpass her. Mrs. Wang's eyes flashed with sarcasm. Is it worth it to make such a fuss for a commoner? Mrs. Wang stepped forward to give Jia's mother a smooth ride, exuding an aura of being a small and successful person. Don't be angry, old lady. Uncle is also momentarily confused. Once he understands, he will understand your good intentions. Jia Zheng immediately fanned the flames. Big brother, this time it's too much. How can you disrespect your mother? Jia Shi glanced at the virtuous Lady Wang and Jia Zheng. These two couples, one is a hypocrite, full of benevolence, righteousness, and morality, secretly suppressing their elder brother, constantly thinking about seeking titles, while the other is a bodhisattva with a snake-like heart and a heart that is more poisonous than anyone else. They are not good things, and they have been hypocritical with them for these years. He is also enough. I can't drive Shanar out. If I drive Shanar out, we'll split up. Jia Shi reiterated his position once again. Are you trying to anger me to death when my parents are not separated? Jia's mother, whose anger had subsided, once again became uncontrollable. Jia Mu picked up the tea bowl on the table and smashed it at Jia Shi's feet, making the sound of porcelain chips cracking, and Jia Shi's clothes were splashed with tea stains. Jia Shi glanced at his clothes. 
Hurry Sean or out, you just want me to split up. Well, I can't control you. Jia Shi, your wings are hard. If something happens in the future, don't bother Rongguofu. Go away. I don't want to see you again. Jia Mu covered her chest and began to cry. It is said that crying, making trouble, and hanging oneself three times is a despicable behavior, but Jia Mu is not satisfied with using these tactics. Crying can't solve the problem. This time Jia she doesn't want to get used to his mother. Since you don't want to see me, I don't want to go, I just hope my mother is in good health. My second brother, my second younger sister's mother will be entrusted to you. If there are any problems with my mother's health in the future, don't blame me for tearing my face and going to court to accuse you of unfilial piety. My son will bid farewell here Jia she stood up from his stool and saluted his mother. This time, he really planned to separate his family. Over the years, he has endured it enough and ruined his reputation as a first-class general to the point where the stones in the thatched pit stink even worse. It is true that he is the general of the stable, ignorant and inexperienced. However, when it comes to saying that he is full of evil, where does this come from? Counting up what he did is a dandy. Compared with some people in Beijing, Jia Xi can be called a good man. The direction was developing in an uncontrollable direction for Jia Mu, but she couldn't bear to retract what she had just said, so she could only let the situation develop. Nowadays, there is a supreme emperor in the court, and filial piety is highly valued in the court. If there is any unfilial behavior, people are basically deposed. She is also Jia Xi's own mother. No matter how hard Jia Xi can disobey himself. Jia's mother, who wants to be treated so coldly, plans to be upset by Jia Zheng, a stupid teammate. What the big brother said. How could my mother not want to see you? You and I are siblings of the same mother, both of whom were born to my mother. Your words will hurt my mother's heart. People will live, grow old, get sick and die all their lives. Scared by Jia Xi's threats, Jia Zheng hurried to stop Jia Xi from leaving, gave Jia Xi a step down, and was afraid that Jia Xi might be annoyed by what he said. He threw his mother to himself and became the shopkeeper. Jia Mu's face turned pale, and she didn't mention her. Mrs. Wang felt a headache when she saw such a teammate dragging her feet. Jia Zheng was as anxious as an ant on a hot pot. Jia Xi smiled in his heart. He really deserved to be his good brother. Is that right? Jia Xi looked at his mother with big innocent eyes, and a faint smile appeared on his mouth. My mother is exactly what my second brother said, it's not that she doesn't want to see me. Fool. Jia Mu's face turned very ugly, and she secretly cursed Jia Zheng as a fool in her heart. At this moment, she wished she hadn't given birth to Jia Zheng. The maid's hand became tighter and tighter as Jia's mother grabbed it. Unable to bear the pain, she let out a painful cry and was immediately dragged down by Jia's mother. The last farce ended unhappily and was hastily resolved. The interior of Fengqi Guard is dark and secure. Inside the small prison cell, it was cleaned spotlessly, with a straw mat and a small table, all the things inside the cell. Jia Shan, who was locked in, sat on the ground, looking around the environment, without even a bug, which was very different from the prison he had imagined. How did Lao Si catch the child? There is also a big man behind Jia Shan's cell. He looks rough and crazy, and wears a short beard around his mouth. He should be about the same age as Jia Shi. Jia Shan noticed that there was another person living across from her. At this moment, the strong man lay unkempt on the grass mat, his fingers holding his nose in the air, and his eyes were shocked. Bastard, what a bastard. Is it crazy to lock such a young child in? The strong man walked up to the fence where he was locked, frowning and looking at Jia Shan who was locked opposite him. Baby, tell uncle why you were locked up. Jia Shan, who didn't want to get into trouble, turned a deaf ear to the strong man's questions and leaned against the wall, closing her eyes and recuperating. There was no response, and the strong man begged himself to lie back. 
A group of prison guards walked in carrying a table of delicious food, and the taste drifted to Jia Shan's nose. Jia Shan couldn't help but shrug her nose. It smells so good since being dismissed as a servant by Jia Mu, he can only follow the big kitchen to eat whatever the big kitchen gives him. It's been a long time since he had such a delicious meal. The strong man across from her was eating heavily, and Jia Shan couldn't help but swallow her saliva. Noticing Jia Shan's small movements, the big man burst into laughter. Are you hungry? Do you want to eat chicken legs? The big man used a chicken leg to switch his fence and tease Jia Shan, causing her eyebrows to furrow high. This person was suffocated, and Jia Shan lay on the grass mat, flipping over with her back to the strong man. The strong man shouted for a prison cell. What instructions do you have, prince? The strong man stood with his hands down, his prison head pleasing him through the fence. Jia Shan raised her eyebrows and looked at the strong man in surprise, who was still a prince. Don't make that child hungry, give the other child a table too. How can this work? The scruffy face of the prison head was wrinkled into a chrysanthemum. The strong man widened his eyes and said, Who are you showing this expression to? Didn't old four give you the meal money for this king? The prison leader was crying with a mournful face, and at this moment, there was more silence than sound. The strong man slammed the bowl of wine in his hand to the ground. Go Lousy has locked me in and won't even pay for a meal. You go and tidy up the meal, and add the expenses from the previous meal to my mansion to claim it. So reckless. Watching the burly man's carefree demeanor, Jia Shan's eyelids twitched fiercely, cursing the emperor on his territory. The identity of this prince is about to be revealed. Jia Shan now has an answer in her heart. The third prince, who is the biological brother of the Holy One today, is Prince Gong. In his early years, due to personality reasons, he was excluded from the possibility of becoming a crown prince by the emperor and went to the northwest. He made remarkable military achievements in the northwest, but why was this prince locked up by the emperor? It doesn't seem like this treatment has offended the emperor. Cute new seeking support. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Prince Gong You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Prince Gong Jia Shan thought to herself, little did she know that Prince Gong across from her had a slight opinion of him in her heart. Why is this child so impolite? He invited him to dinner without even saying thank you, Prince Gong muttered to himself. Little baby. Prince Gong's face turned a little red, indicating that he had been a bit drunk. I invited you to eat, why didn't you even thank me? Jia Shan was taken aback when asked. She was too shocked just now and forgot about it. Jia Shan quickly stood up to bow and thank her. Looking at Jia Shan's awkward appearance, Prince Gong seemed to have successfully played a prank and burst into laughter. I thought it was a horizontal person, but I didn't expect it to be so cowardly. It's much worse than when I was young, where I was not afraid of everything. Jia Shan's face turned black. This was just playing with children, neither Dao nor Dao. Jia Shan sat down and snorted coldly at Prince Gong across from her. I really think Jia Shan has a good temper. Perhaps their status may not be equal after going out, but in this prison, we are both prisoners, and who can be noble? Prince Gong is even happier. Jia Shan frowned and looked at Prince Gong, thinking that this person was mentally ill. The prison warden came to deliver the meal, and Jia Shan wolfed it down. Which family's child are you from? Why are you so hungry? Prince Gong asked a question in his heart. The children of the Sun Gui family are picky eaters, and he has never seen anyone with such a good appetite as Jia Shan. Jia Shan glanced at Prince Gong across the street. He had a short mouth for eating people and a soft hand for taking people. After eating someone's food, it was difficult for him to be indifferent to them. Once again, this prince is also quite good. He has a good relationship with his fellow inmates when he goes out, and he has a good network. Jia Shan swallowed a bite of chicken in her mouth. 
I am from the grand mansion of Rongwa Prefecture. Jia Shi's children. Jia Shan nodded. The children of familiar families have never heard of Jia Shi's accident. This is Fengkiwei's dungeon, and Sun Gui who committed the crime is not here. When we were studying together in the big board room, Jia Shi was very angry with his spleen and stomach. He often mixed together. Later, he went to the northwest and came back unexpectedly. His temper was different from that when he was studying in the big board room. Prince Gong frowned and pondered. I didn't hear that your father had done something wrong. How could you be locked up? Jia Shan said without lifting her head, spreading rumors. What? Prince Gong drank the wine from his mouth and spewed it out in one breath. This child did not follow his father and was not sincere at all. He was the only one spreading rumors, and what he said may not be believed by anyone. The punishment is like this, it doesn't count as spreading. I'm just reminding the people of the world that I won't be prepared for the locust plague. Jia Shan spoke up to explain. After listening to Jia Shan's words, Prince Gong was shocked beyond measure. Damn it, this is the first time I have seen such an arrogant child like you. Has your child weaned yet? I dare to confidently assert the locust plague. The executioner's knife does not recognize people and spreads unfavorable comments to the court, which is not a trivial matter. Jia Shan glanced at Prince Gong. I don't believe it, Prince. If you send someone to dig some soil in the field, then you will know. Prince Gong's wine had already woken up, and as she watched heartlessly, Jia Shan chose to shut her mouth. Jia Shan reluctantly spread out her hand. I knew no one believed it when I said it, but only a few can be saved. In less than two months, the locust plague is about to break out. I have done everything I can. I will live a lifetime without regrets. Jia Shan lay sleeping soundly on the grass mat, there was no sign of dying. Jia Shan slept soundly, but Prince Gong tossed and turned but couldn't fall asleep. What if we were to say something like what Jia Shan said, and if it really happened, there would be a locust plague in the Qian. Xing San Go, Xing San Go, get out of here. Don't be afraid of ten thousand, just be afraid of the unexpected. If it really happens, ordinary people are most afraid of natural disasters. If a natural disaster comes, the people will be displaced. Now, the great Qian is surrounded by wolves, and if something goes wrong, they will be attacked and bitten. When the military disaster rises again, the great Qian people will really have no way to survive. Prince Gong shouted out the name of the prison leader loudly. The prison warden ran over again with a mournful expression on his face. Is there anything else, Prince? Prince Gong handed a jade pendant to the prison warden, who looked at it with a look of fear on his face and quickly waved his hand. The prince cannot do this. His majesty hates corrupt people the most. If I accept your jade pendant today, I'm afraid I'll die. What good thing do you think? Take my king's jade pendant and immediately go to the Prince Gong's mansion. Find someone to dig a few bags of soil from the ground on my king's estate, and remember to let them run more to the estate. Looking at the stunned prison captain, Prince Gong gave him a quick glance at his head. The warden was really stunned by Prince Gong, and a strange look flashed in his eyes as he looked at Prince Gong, asking what it was to dig soil on the village. The prison warden wanted to ask again, but was slapped again by Prince Gong without hesitation. Looking at Prince Gong's serious demeanor, the prison leader instantly understood that he should not ask what was wrong. He still had this little realization of seeing off so many adults in this prison. That night, Prince Gong received something from the people of Prince Gong's mansion. Jia Shan couldn't help but admire the efficiency of the Gongqin prince's mansion. Prince Gong poured bags of soil onto the ground, spread them out, and indeed discovered many insect eggs. Prince Gong left the prison and went to the palace. In the palace, the emperor sat on the dragon chair with drowsy eyes, his whole resentment quickly turning into substance. He had just fallen asleep with a concubine in his arms when he was awakened. The emperor was indeed not human. 
Your brother, you're not staying in prison. Why do you come to me so late? Did you shut down a little baby yesterday? It's because I've been locked up. Your brother is so anxious to come out and find me. Is that little child your illegitimate child? The emperor's eyes were tinged with interest. The little boy who was locked in yesterday boasted shamelessly that there would be a locust plague. Little did they know that the national teacher had already made up a divination for De Qian. This year, De Qian will have good weather. I can't believe a little baby's words. Originally, he didn't want to catch him, but not catching him is not enough to quell rumors. After a while of education, he will let go. Prince Gong poured a bag of soil onto the ground, grabbed a handful of soil containing locust eggs, and came to the emperor, spreading the soil flat in front of him. Twenty egg-shaped objects were exposed in front of the emperor, and his heart thumped, feeling uneasy. What is this? Locust eggs, emperor, come with me. Prince Gong led the emperor to inspect the soil in the bag. After reading it, the emperor sat on the ground in a daze. How could it be? The national teacher predicted that the great Qian would have good weather this year. Even now, the emperor still feels a bit incredulous. Prince Gong, looking at the emperor's appearance, suddenly felt a wave of anger in his heart, hatred that iron cannot be turned into steel. I've told the emperor before that the national teacher was an old scammer, you can't believe it, but you just believe it. What's going on now? Prince Gong sat aside angrily, and the emperor now needed to be quiet. He now had a scene in his mind of locusts flying in the sky, grain merchants sitting on the ground raising prices, the people without food, starving people everywhere, and refugees wandering freely. What should he do then? The emperor's head is buried in his knee. Looking at the decadent emperor, Prince Gong let out a deep sigh. Don't be so disheartened. There are still two months left until the locust plague. There's nothing we can do. The emperor raised his head, and by this time, tears were streaming down his face. Yeah, two months, there's nothing I can do. I want to see that Jashan. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Should I say it or not? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Should I Say It or Not The eunuch came out in response. Stop. Just walked out not far, knew oneself and the enemy, and was invincible in a hundred battles. The emperor regretted it. If something goes wrong, there will always be demons. Just now, he was overwhelmed by the news of the impending locust plague, and before he could figure out Jia Shan's situation, he was in a hurry to see him. The emperor stopped the eunuch from behind. The faces of Prince Gong and the eunuch flashed with confusion, and the calm emperor's expression became calm. You go down. The emperor gave orders to the eunuch. Looking at the emperor's expression, the eunuch lowered his head and took down all the palace maids and eunuchs in the main hall. Only the emperor and Prince Gong remained in the entire hall for conversation. Brother, do you think there is anyone behind Jia Shan? The national teacher in the palace can't predict yet. No matter how evil a child is, he can still be stronger than the national teacher in the palace. The emperor pointed out a loophole, and Prince Gong's face became serious. He didn't think much about it at the time, nor did he suspect it. Seeing the locust eggs in the soil, he hurriedly came out of the prison. At first glance, it doesn't seem like a child has the ability to do this, although through a short period of interaction, Jia Shan's performance is indeed extraordinary. Prince Gong was somewhat uncertain when Jia Shan said to the emperor, let's meet first. Whether or not there is anyone behind him, his ability to take this step at risk is enough to show that he and the people behind him have no ill intentions. If not, they will never speak up. They will wait for the disaster to truly happen, profit from it, cause trouble, and harm the vast Qianjiang mountains, I was too careful, but I still want to give him a try. I don't want him to see me so easily. What does your majesty want to do? At midnight, Jia Shan was sleeping soundly. Young master, young master. Shaking the prison head woke up Jia Shan, 
who was sleeping soundly. Jia Shan was blindfolded and taken away to an unfamiliar environment. Along the way, Jia Shan's mood was filled with excitement. His intuition was that the emperor wanted to see him, otherwise what would he do so grandly, blindfolded, and handcuffed. At the destination, the eye mask and handcuffs were removed, and Jia Shan looked around. Without tall pillars, everything was so ordinary, not as luxurious as his small courtyard. It didn't look like a palace at all, more like the home of a minister. A hint of disappointment flashed in Jia Shan's eyes, all of which fell into the eyes of the emperor and Prince Gong. The emperor secretly felt proud, knowing that Jia Shan had ulterior motives, but he didn't know who was behind him, the divine being behind him. It was not easy for a child to pretend for so long. The goal was achieved, and the emperor had someone push the door in. As agreed beforehand, Prince Gong acted in front of Jia Shan, concealing his identity. Prince Gong walked ahead, the emperor dressed in plain clothes walked behind, and the two sat down. Jia Shan was worried and ignored Prince Gong who came in. Jia Shan, let me show my loyalty. I came out with you myself. Prince Gong, who had a lot of fun, passed by Jia Shan and lightly patted her shoulder, looking like a good friend. Jia Shan didn't even give a glance, looked depressed, and there was no hint of joy on her face. Are you not happy that King Jia Shan has rescued you from prison? Prince Gong looked at Jia Shan curiously. Jia Shan glanced at Prince Gong, calculated such a situation, and came out without seeing the emperor. She was overjoyed. Did you not tell the emperor, my lord? Or did your majesty not want to see me? Jia Shan pitifully asked Prince Gong, who suppressed a smile and glanced at the emperor. Lao Si is really frustrated. The whole scene, this child was eager to see him, but he just didn't feel happy as he wished. Prince Gong said solemnly, Your Majesty, do you want to see him as soon as you want? The palace gate is closed so late, and if you want to see him, you have to wait until tomorrow. What's wrong with you pretending to be mischievous and making me come out? Jia Shan exploded her hair, with a hint of gunpowder in her tone. There was not enough achievement, there was more defeat, and a calculation was in vain. Jia Shan collapsed on the chair, emitting a sense of decadence from her whole body. This is his only chance for promotion now. If he doesn't succeed with this opportunity, he can only endure humiliation and wait for him to pass the imperial examination or go to the battlefield to kill enemies and make achievements. However, it is unknown when he passed the imperial examination, and his current small physique is not enough for the Tartars to fight with a single punch. As the old saying goes, Jia Shi is good to him and protects him everywhere, but he has to put his identity right. He is just a commoner. The martial arts schools in the capital are all inferior to Jia Shi. It takes a lot of contacts and money to become a famous teacher. In addition, the soup he needs for daily healing is astronomical. He is not confident that Jia Shi will give him so much money to learn martial arts. If not, he would start as a soldier in the military camp and cannot become a fierce general or stand out, all of which are useless to learn. Looking at Jia Shan, the emperor smiled and not many dared to get angry at his brother. As far as he knew, his imperial brother's reputation can stop children from crying at night in this capital. I remember the last two days, whether it was the children of the Duke of Li or the Duke of Qi, both of whom were children of the generals. When I saw his imperial brother, I was scared to cry after just a few words. It's not common to be able to interact with his imperial brother so casually and confidently. Prince Gong tugged at the corner of his mouth. If he had known that Jia Shan was brave, he never expected that Jia Shan would not even give him face. Prince Gong coughed twice. This is a close friend of the king and also a minister of the court. Regarding the locust plague, please talk to him carefully first. He can help to advise and advise. Let's plan before going to see your majesty. Prince Gong seriously deceived Jia Shan. Jia Shan lifted her eyelids and fooled the child. What if he swallowed his credit? He is very accurate in judging people. 
He looks like a weak and scholarly person, and you don't have to look at him. He knows that he has a dark heart and many eyes. He is the kind of person who sells people and helps them count money. It is said that once a person achieves great success, their bones will wither. In his eyes, these civil servants are the real people who kill without blinking an eye and step on human blood to rise to power. He finally came up with something, but he couldn't make wedding clothes for people and let them pick peaches. Oh! Jia Shan gave a faint response and closed her eyes, looking uninterested. Prince Gong and the Emperor exchanged a glance, knowing that it was difficult to use jargon from Jia Shan. Unexpectedly, before he could speak, he was ignored by Jia Shan. This young friend, I. I am not a bad person. I have a question for you. How did you know that locust plague would occur? The emperor took the initiative to speak up. I don't know how many ranks and whose surname this adult is worshipping in the court. Jia Shan stared at the emperor in front of her, who was plain-skinned and not easy to offend. She avoided talking and casually asked. In order to gain the trust of Jia Shan, Emperor Hu Jiu said, My official name is Qi Cheng, and I am currently serving as a clerk in the Hanlin Academy. A scholar from the Hanlin Academy and a martial artist, this combination seems incongruous. The wind tightened and Jia Shan suddenly became alert, no longer speaking. The Emperor patiently spoke to Jia Shan, while Prince Gong intervened in an attempt to gain Jia Shan's trust. Jia Shan began to become conflicted, whether to say it or not. If he didn't say he came out now, who would remember a child's words when the locust plague occurred two months later? He was afraid of encountering black and eating black, and now the moral bottom line of civil servants is very low. His second uncle greeted him and didn't even investigate. Jia Yutsuan, a Jinshir who was dismissed due to corruption, was reinstated in his original position. He briefly mentioned it and became a magistrate. Jinling is a prosperous and good place. Students from humble backgrounds who want to pass the imperial examination and become the governor of Jinling are not in need of any help. They need to advance to the second tier. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Has a good word. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 has a good word he never says anything until he sees the emperor. The causes of locust infestation are complex, and the explanation based solely on digging in the ground is pale. Despite their pleasantries, the two still couldn't gain Jia Shan's trust. How can we say it? The emperor's patience in coaxing children is running out. Jia Shan also clearly doesn't seem like a child. Treating him like a child may have the opposite effect making him feel like they are playing with him like a fool. As the emperor thought, Jia Shan really felt that they were treating him like a fool. No one can say good words to deceive others. Without some practical advice, he can't exchange five yuan for the chicken brother in his hand. The emperor who realized his mistake came straight to the point. Jia Shan opened her eyes, a pair of which revealed maturity that was not in line with his age. I want to see your majesty. If I can see your majesty, I will say. So easy. The emperor couldn't help but laugh, thinking he was just a fool. Why bother doing so? Admitting one's identity early on, is it still necessary to go around such a big circle? Jia Shan stared at the emperor, and the expression on the emperor's face fell into Jia Shan's eyes. Jia Shan couldn't help but suspect herself that his demands were not too simple. Perhaps he could add some vulgar things on top of them. He was really short of money. When I first traveled, I had Lu Lao Lao as a reference, thinking that there was a lot of money in the second or second month of each month, and I also wanted to open a store to make money. It wasn't until all the money was spent on food that he realized how high the prices were in this era. Two tails of silver were not enough for him to go to a restaurant in the capital for a meal. He only saved ten tails of silver after two years and the Chinese New Year's money. Renting a storefront in this precious capital is not enough. I'll say it right in front of you. Stop pretending, the emperor directly admits his identity. The originally ordinary emperor, 
with the blessing of his status, had a halo of righteousness in Jia Shan's eyes. Jia Shan's eyes flowed back and forth between the emperor and Prince Gong in disbelief. Prince Gong lowered his head with a hint of guilt. Okay, two adults teamed up to cheat him out of a child, that's really thick-skinned. Jia Shan, whose mood is like a roller coaster, needs to calm down and organize her language. Why didn't you mention Jia Shan? I really want to hear your insights. As the saying goes, after a severe drought, locust infestations are more likely to occur. Nowadays, with continuous spring rain and no drought, why does it happen? The emperor was eager to know how Jia Shan predicted the locust plague. Jia Shan dared not be reckless anymore. The person in front of him was the emperor he had planned to meet all around. He had to make up for the loss and leave a good impression. Whether it's possible to make a comeback in Rongwa Mansion depends on this one. Jia Shan stood up and respectfully bowed to the emperor, apologizing for her recent rebellion. The emperor smiled and waved his hand. In recent years, natural disasters have occurred frequently, and he is now looking forward to Jia Shan's discussion on locust plague. Perhaps he can find a way to eradicate locust plague from him. Your majesty knows why locust infestations occur after a severe drought. The emperor shook his head. Jia Shan continued, locusts are a dry loving creature. During the season of frequent droughts, they lay a large number of eggs. The climate is suitable, and locust eggs can hatch in two months, just in time for the autumn harvest. Last year, floods occurred frequently in various regions, and low-dot-lying areas of the land accumulated water. After the water dried up, there was still a large amount of water remaining in the soil, attracting a large number of locusts to lay eggs in the fields. After a major flood, there will be another major drought, which will cause the temperature to rise in winter. A large number of locust eggs will survive, and when the temperature is suitable next year, a large number of locusts can hatch it turned out that this was the cause of the locust plague, and the emperor showed a sudden realization. It turned out to be so simple, yet no one had ever observed it before. The northern region is plagued by locusts year dot round, and it would be great if we could prevent them from the root cause. Jia Shan, can you guarantee that what you said is true? Your Majesty, after observing for a few years, you will understand the habits of locusts. The Emperor is now very happy to understand the reasons for the frequent occurrence of locust infestations. If he cannot find a cure, he can also transport food from the south in advance and prepare for the disaster before the locust infestation arrives. Jia Shan, you are very good and have made great contributions. The emperor spoke up to praise Jia Shan, and Jia Shan nodded in agreement. He was indeed good. Halfway through, the emperor suddenly stopped and Jia Shan waited eagerly for the emperor's words. You are too young now, and I cannot give you an official title at the moment. I need you to understand me. The emperor continued to speak to Jia Shan with some guilt, and Jia Shan's face showed a look of disappointment. What the emperor said is true. He is indeed not very old now, and granting him an official title may cause dissatisfaction in the court. It is normal for the emperor to have such concerns. But he planned not to have nothing at all. Your Majesty, would you be willing to give a word to the grassroots? Jia Shan raised her head and showed a smile of grievance and compromise. If she couldn't get an official position, giving a word was also acceptable. When others ask, he says that even if the Emperor takes it, he will have more face. The Emperor hesitated in his heart and could not give words randomly. Every word and action of the Emperor would provoke countless speculations. It would be bad if Jia Shan were destroyed as a result. Jia Shan looked at the emperor with grievances, and the emperor couldn't help but soften his heart. Ambition does not come with age. I hope you can have lofty aspirations and become a useful person for your country. Let's call it Ziyuan. Jia Shan chewed it carefully and found that the characters were very ordinary, similar to those of Zhang San. When she spoke, she could easily collide with a large group of people. But the people who took the characters were different, which added another layer of meaning. 
Jia Shan was very satisfied with this character. Thank you, your majesty, for giving me the courtesy name. I have one more request from the grassroots. Jia Shan looked carefully at the emperor. He had one more request, he wanted the emperor to help him find a college to attend. The ethnic studies of the Jia family have long been rotten, and Jia Dairu's knowledge is also limited. He cannot teach too much and is not attentive. He is already six years old now and will be enlightened next year. It is not a problem for him to learn from the Jia family. But it won't be long before the Shue family comes. He really doesn't want to watch Shue Pan's group of Qi brothers and Qi brothers compete for jealousy, not to mention their sharp eyes, and disturb him in taking the imperial examination. The emperor frowned and did not refuse Jia Shan. Jia Shan spoke out her request. There was a hint of doubt in the emperor's eyes. The Jia family did not have any ethnic studies, so the emperor didn't think much and agreed to help Jia Shan arrange the academy for him. The eunuch came in to take Jia Shan out, but Jia Shan did not move. Jia Shan, do you have any further questions? The emperor was overjoyed. Jia Shan was really bold. She had already agreed to his two requests and wanted any benefits. Jia Shan shamelessly smiled with embarrassment and bowed to the emperor. Your Majesty, I have heard that everything the emperor says has a decree. Can you give me one so that I can take it back and avoid being scolded? What a slippery little kid! The emperor laughed heartily and summoned the palace staff to bring a blank imperial edict, then picked up a pen and wrote it. Each word appeared in the emperor's pen, and Jia Shan stood on the emperor's side watching, her mouth wide open to her ear. Your Majesty, could you please write another line for the grassroots? Without Your Majesty's permission, no one can affect their education. Jia Shan pointed with her small hand at the blank space at the end of the decree, and the emperor's eyes flashed with surprise. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Hui Fu You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Hui Fu Jia Shan smiled bitterly at the emperor. It's too easy for the housewife to tidy up a child. If it gets up, she's afraid that Jia's mother will do the same thing for Jia Baoyu as Mrs. Wang. In the name of filial piety, he is locked in a Buddhist temple every day to copy Buddhist scriptures and pick up Buddha beans. One copy is dozens of times, and one pick is a big pot, so what else can he attend? He can just become a monk. The emperor followed Jia Shan's instructions to fill in this stroke after the written imperial edict, and then gave a glance to the close eunuch Xia Shouzhong, asking him to investigate the Jia family. Jia Shan's reaction was clearly wrong. The brothers of the big family had to attend school one by one, but Jia Shan was afraid that she wouldn't be able to attend school. This reaction seemed like she had been abused. If that's the case, he will teach the people of the Jia family a lesson for Jia Shan. Jia Shan was sent out of the palace by imperial decree. Along the way, Jia Shan was in a happy mood. After returning to the Jia mansion this time, he was no longer living a life of frustration, facing Jia Shan who had no fighting ability against Jia Baoyu. The door of Rongwa mansion was knocked. Who is it? The gatekeeper on duty tonight heard a knock on the door and shouted out half asleep and half awake. There was no echo, and the door draped its clothes and poked its head out from inside the door to check. We have been ordered by your majesty to send the young master back to his mansion. The door was dazed and wide-eyed, and the eunuch's sharp and delicate voice came into its ears, instantly awakening it. Seeing the appearance of the newcomer clearly, the door trembled with fear. Having a white face and wearing eunuch attire, one is not necessarily a member of the palace. The eunuch had a gloomy face and asked the door at the door to open. The door opened and as we passed by, the cold voice of the eunuch rang out. Do we look good at home? It's the first time we've encountered a family like you who doesn't understand the rules when we go out to work. Jia Shan rode into the second gate of Rongwa Mansion in a carriage. Jia Shan, who got off the carriage, thanked the eunuch for stuffing a silver ingot, which was five tails, half of his wealth. 
Jia Shan felt a slight pain in her heart, and the eunuch felt the weight of the silver ingot in her sleeve. After a rough thought, the eunuch pushed Jia Shan back. I've been waiting for you, young master. There's no way to collect money for serving your majesty. Please take it back, young master. The eunuch smiled. Although he was greedy and had six incomplete roots, he was not enough to ask for money from a child. Jia Shan carefully observed the eunuch's expression. The eunuch had a sincere expression on his face, and indeed did not want his money. Jia Shan clasped her fists and saluted the eunuch. The eunuch rode back in a carriage. Close the door. Fourth master, you have returned. The door looked strangely at Jia Shan in front of him. Yesterday, Jia Shan was caught by the Fengqi guard, causing a great uproar in the Rongwa mansion, and the hearts of the servants in the mansion were also implicated. Rumors about Jia Shan continue to spread, becoming increasingly mysterious. Now that Jia Shan has returned intact, it was still personally sent back by the emperor. Jia Shan took out the emperor's decree from her arms and shook it at the door. The door was instantly attracted by this bright yellow, and Jia Shan kicked the door, which was so foolish that it was not breathable. Hurry up and inform your family. This is the imperial decree given to me by your majesty. The door that was kicked awake ran and shouted as it ran. The Rongwa mansion is getting brighter and brighter, and many servants are getting up at night to check the situation. The fourth master of the old lady has returned, carrying the imperial edict. The door rushed forward to Jia Mu's yard and excitedly shouted inside. Rongwa mansion has two old masters, who have passed away, two second masters, and two third masters, but only this fourth master is Rongwa mansion. The maid who was guarding Jia's mother came out of the house displeased. What's the noise? Come back as soon as you come back. The old lady is sleeping, why are you making so much noise? Get out of here now. The maid scolded the door, but the door stood still and dared not speak back. The maids in Jia's mother's house are all treasures in this mansion, and if they provoke them, eating a meal is light. The maid scolded enough, and the servant smiled and explained. Sister, don't worry. The fourth lord was sent back by the holy emperor himself, carrying the imperial edict. Sister kindly went in to announce it. Wait. The maid glanced at the servant and went in to wake up Mrs. Jia. Jia Mu was sleeping in a daze. When she heard the words, imperial edict, she immediately woke up and her face immediately became warm with anger. There is no decree that the day will not light up yet. The maid said the door again, and Jia Mu frowned. When she heard Jia Shan's name, her eyes showed shock. Are you talking about Shan Xiaoxi? The maid nodded. The door is still outside. Confirming that it was true, Jia Mu dared not delay and immediately asked someone to dress her up and put on the clothes of the destined woman. Jia Deus Han passed away for many years, and the Rongwa prefecture has never received any imperial edicts again. Although the grandson who brought back the edict this time is one she doesn't like, it should still be taken seriously. The big family prospers and suffers losses. As long as Jia Shan is still a member of the Rongwa mansion, then the Rongwa mansion will have no honor. In Jia's mother's blue gauze cabinet, Jia Baoyu was displeased and lost his temper. Sleep well, go pick up some errands. Jia Baoyu lives in Jia Mu's by Sha cabinet. While Jia Mu is tidying up, he is still causing trouble over there. Living in Jia Mubi's wardrobe, Lin Daiyu, who was only separated by a wall from Jia Baoyu, coldly glanced at Jia Baoyu's direction and asked the maid to dress her up. At this time, Daiyu had just entered the Rongwa mansion for only a year, and her feelings for Jia Baoyu were not yet as deep. Previously, Jia Baoyu caused such a scene without reason, which left Lin Daiyu, who was more interested than him, completely out of favor. Now that Jia Baoyu has spoken those rebellious and immoral words again, Lin Daiyu feels even more that Jia Baoyu is a playboy and looks down on him. Lin Daiyu, who had been packed up, went out with her maid. When she saw Lin Daiyu, 
who had been packed up, Jia Baoyu rushed over before putting on her clothes. Sister Lin, are you going too? Lin Daiyu was startled by the sudden appearance of Jia Baoyu. The nurturing mother quickly blocked Lin Daiyu's way and stopped him. Brother, why don't you get dressed and come out? Shirin pulled Jia Baoyu and reminded him that he was impolite. Without much thought, Jia Baoyu covered his clothes. I just saw that my younger sister was too excited and forgot about it. Please forgive me. The nurturing mother frowned and almost pinched a fly to death. What nonsense is that? There are no rules in Rongua Mansion. She had heard of it before coming, and after Jia's mother repeatedly begged, she allowed Lin Daiyu and Jia Baoyu to live together in the Bai Sha cabinet. I didn't expect Jia Baoyu to be so reckless, he really doesn't understand any etiquette. The nurturing mother looked at Jia Baoyu with disdain. It's late at night and cool in the sky. Brother, hurry back and tidy up your clothes. I'll report to the old lady tomorrow, and my girl won't live here anymore. The nurturing mother left this sentence, no matter how crazy Jia Baoyu went, she took Lin Daiyu away. From the beginning to the end, Lin Daiyu did not say a word for Jia Baoyu. Now Lin Daiyu's nurturing mother is not Lin Daiyu's milk mother, Wang. Wang's mother comes from the Jia family and has a heart for the Jia family. Lin Rohai was replaced by the female official who came out of the palace in front of her, Grandma Shen. Feeling suffocated, Jia Baoyu pulled off the jade from his neck and threw it fiercely to the ground. Damn old plague woman! Why did she separate me and Lin's sister? The maids were in a mess, hugging Jia Baoyu and looking for Jade. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Jia Huan You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Jia Huan All the people living in Jia Mu's yard have arrived, and after waiting for a while, only Jia Baoyu is missing. Where is Baoyu? Jia Mu glanced around and asked Jia Baoyu. Yuan Yang waited by Jia Mu's side, facing her. Yuan Yang's eyes flashed with a shy expression, considering how to make Baoyu Yuan. Jia's mother moved her eyes away from Yuan Yang, who stumbled and found a reason to explain to Jia Baoyu. Jia's mother frowned, knowing that it must be Baoyu who was causing trouble and refused to get up. It's important to follow the imperial decree, and Jia Mu doesn't have time to coax Jia Baoyu anymore. It's not really dawn yet, so let him fall asleep according to his own sex. Everything was completed according to the steps, and when she heard the words behind the edict, Jia Mu's face changed and her good mood of accepting the edict disappeared. Is the emperor mocking Rongua Mansion for treating illegitimate children harshly? Will such a large Rongua Mansion not allow Jia Shan to study? How can we make the people of Rongwa Mansion behave when this news spreads? This specifically refers to her. The only ones in the entire mansion who dislike Jia Shan are her and Jia Baoyu. Who knows the meaning of the imperial decree? Jia's mother left with an unpleasant expression and a grand presence. After this difficulty, Jia Shan resumed her previous treatment. His servants have also been sent back and on days when their clothes are stretched out and their meals are open, they no longer have to follow the big kitchen to eat. The people in the big kitchen will bring the ingredients according to his requirements, and what they want to eat will be made by the people in his yard, which is much more convenient, without looking at the faces of others. Mammy Gao, I want to eat crab yellow Xiaolong Bao. Jia Shan practiced writing and spoke to the woman embroidered with a purse. Grandma Gao raised her head, her eyes calm and full of love as she looked at Jia Shan. Crab yellow is a cold substance. Brother, you are going to school tomorrow, be careful if you have diarrhea. Without getting what she wanted to eat, Jia Shan put down her pen unhappily and ran to the side of Gao Mama to act cute and coquettish. I just want to eat Mama, you can let me eat it. No, don't make a fuss, buddy. If you have diarrhea, how can you go to school? Grandma Gao sternly rejected Jia Shan. Mammy, Dong. 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 Jia Shan shook the high grandmother's arm and the sound of the door rang out. Shan Laosi, I'm here to find you. 
three-inch Ding Jiahuan knocked on the door outside the door. Today, he got new clothes and came specifically to find Jia Shan, making him have long eyes. Grandma Gao put down her needlework and opened the door. Jia Huan stood outside the door dissatisfied, showing a look of disgust like a young adult. Are you paralyzed? The door is opening so slowly. Jia Huan followed Aunt Zhao and learned to speak harshly and crudely. Knowing his temper, Gao Mama didn't have the same understanding as him and made way for him to come in. Jia Huan walked in with eight character steps, learning how to sing opera, trembling step by step, and pretending. Jia Shan couldn't help but burst out laughing. The dark green robe looked a bit old dot fashioned and loose, and it didn't fit him very well. The two small balls inserted on his head accompanied him as he walked, swaying and accompanied by his expression, making people unable to help but laugh. Grandma Gao was also amused by his funny appearance. Without conscience, now that Jia Shan Yu has gained power, do you also look down on me? Jia Shan has changed. She used to envy him when she saw him wearing new clothes, but now she looks down on herself. In vain, she still wants to borrow him to wear them for two days. Jia Huan's self-esteem was hurt, and he lay on the Kong crying loudly, looking pitiful. Jia Huan, as described in the original work, is clumsy and jealous, but he is not naturally bad. His bad behavior is mostly influenced by the long-term pathological and unfair living environment of Rongwa Prefecture, as well as the character and upbringing of Aunt Zhao. As long as someone guides him towards the good, he can still improve. Jia Huan cried so sadly that Jia Shan couldn't bear it and patted Jia Huan's back. Don't cry, it's my fault. I have something good for you. Jia Shan comforted Jia Huan. He and Jia Huan and Jia Tsong are both brothers and sisters in this mansion. They usually play together well, but with good things, how can they not think of their own good brothers? Jia Huan's ears moved and he lifted a face covered in tears and snot, looking pitifully at Jia Shan. What good thing? Jia Shan's face showed an evil smile, and the silly child would be very happy to see it. Jia Shan asked Jia Huan to wait here and personally go to the study to pick it up. In no time, Jia Shan returned with a servant, holding a large wooden bookshelf. Jia Huan's eyes lit up, and the dark clouds on his face cleared away. He held on to the box and didn't let go. Fourth, you are a conscientious person. It's not in vain for me to treat you well. Jia Huan couldn't wait to open the box. He was really happy, and this was the first time someone had given him something without charity. Open it and take a look. Jia Shan patted the bookcase, which was specially made by Jia Shi to find skilled craftsmen in Beijing. The quality of the bookcase can't be said. It's okay for Jia Huan to keep the heiress. Jia Shan gave him the key to the bookshelf. Jia Huan took the key and carefully unlocked the box. This is different from what he received from Mrs. Wang. Mrs. Wang always gave him tattered clothes that Jia Baoyu didn't want. Jia Shan gave him a brand new one, not to mention anything else, the workmanship of this box alone is extraordinary. The box opened and the space inside was occupied by books. Jia Huan's smile stopped on his face, gradually turning dull. He looked down at the contents of the box and felt unlucky. Jia Shan smiled and took out the books from the bookshelf one by one. I personally selected these books, including the four books and five classics, poetry, songs, and classics from historians. You can use them for scientific research without any problem. Jia Huan has already stayed, this is the first time he has seen so many books outside of Jia Zheng's study. Pulling Jia Huan, Jia Shan opened the hidden compartment at the bottom of the box. Inside the compartment, he placed a high dot quality inkstone and a wolf hair pen. These things are all truly valuable things, it's not a problem to sell them for a thousand or eight hundred tails. Hand over the two to Jia Huan, and Jia Shan solemnly reminds him not to use them indiscriminately, and to keep them for future scientific research or when writing good poetry. 
Jia Huan was grateful to Jia Shan in his heart. There was no wind in the room, and sand blew into Jia Huan's eyes, causing cat urine to flow. Jia Shan touched Jia Huan's head. Don't cry, just call me brother. Dot. Jia Huan's expression paused, distancing himself from Jia Shan, and his expression changed greatly. You're good, Jia Xiaoxi. You're giving me these things just to be my brother. Don't even think about it, you bastard. Jia Huan stared at Jia Shan with a piercing expression. Jia Shan smiled provocatively. When it comes to age, he is only a few days older than Jia Huan, but unfortunately, he is only one year older than him, which has kept Jia Huan resentful of him. Jia Shan dodged the rushing figure of Jia Huan and played for a while. Seeing that it was getting late, Jia Huan returned with the things Jia Shan had sent. Aunt Zhao, who was losing her temper in the room, rushed out when she heard the commotion. Seeing Jia Huan asking someone to carry a large wooden box, Aunt Zhao curiously leaned in. Son, what did you bring back? Aunt Zhao wanted to reach out and touch, but was slapped off by Jia Huan. Don't touch it, what should I do if it breaks? Jia Huan had a huge reaction and was careful to guard against Aunt Chao. I'm afraid that this thing, like his monthly payment, will be taken by Aunt Chao and never returned. Aunt Chao's eyes rolled, and her intuition told her that there must be some treasure inside. Jia Huan stood in front of the bookshelf with a black face. Huaner, listen to your mother's words. Give this thing to your mother, and she will keep it for you. When you marry your wife in the future, she will take it out for you. Aunt Chao smiled and coaxed Jia Huan, raising her hand to move the box to her own house. Jia Huan looked anxious and quickly pulled on Aunt Chao. Aunt Chao accidentally tripped and fell to the ground while pulling Jia Huan. Jia Huan hurriedly went to help, but was hit by Jia Zheng who came in. This is private. In the original work, in private, Jia Huan is called Aunt Zhao, mother, or mother, end of this chapter. Chapter 9 Enrollment You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Enrollment Jia Zheng is very strict in his teaching of children's academic conduct, and Jia Zhu is an example. However, later on, Jia Baoyu and Jia Huan were introduced. Jia Baoyu has a natural dislike for reading, and he turns a deaf ear to Jia Zheng's teachings. He detests some of his teachings and is often guarded by his mother when it causes trouble. As Jia Baoyu was deposed, he remembered having another spare tire, Jia Huan, and focused all his attention on him. Jia Baoyu was already in a state of free range. It's just that he took it a bit late, and Jia Huan has already been led astray by Aunt Chao. Jia Huan has been pretending for a while, but he can't hold on for a lifetime. After discovering Jia Huan's nature, no matter how Jia Zheng taught him, Jia Huan's nature remained unchanged. The three values and habits that were already formed in childhood, I want him to change them when he grows up and find it difficult to ascend to heaven. Jia Zheng, who came in, saw two people pulling an ant Chao falling to the ground. Jia Zheng subconsciously thought that Jia Huan had pushed ant Chao, and in a fit of anger, he slapped Jia Huan. Little beast, what are you pushing and shoving your own mother for? Jia Huan was stunned and sat on the ground, his face covered in wood. He didn't mean it, he just didn't want to be snatched away by Aunt Zhao. Jia Zheng went to help Aunt Zhao. Aunt Zhao pulled Jia Zheng and saw Jia Huan's flushed face. She widened her eyes, her eyes filled with heartache. Master, Huaner didn't push me, just to carry the box. I accidentally fell. Aunt Chao took Jia Zhang's arm to explain to Jia Huan, and with a heart-wrenching expression, signaled to him to speak. Jia Huan covered his face and spoke in a daze. I didn't want to push my mother. Jia Zhang's attention was drawn to the box in Aunt Chao's mouth, and Jia Huan's explanation was no longer important. Looking at this box, it's a bookshelf. The wood workmanship is all top dot notch, far beyond what Aunt Zhao of Jia Huan can afford. Lenovo had heard about Jia Huan before, 
and his personality was even more crooked than he thought. Now everyone has started to sneak around, and Jia Zheng's eyebrows are raised and furrowed. Damn it, where did you get this box? Jia Zheng loudly asked Jia Huan about the source of this box, and Jia Huan was scared out of his wits by the roar. This time Jia Zheng really wronged Jia Huan. Jia Huan really didn't steal, and the young Jia Huan looked at Jia Zheng in fear. Jia Zheng was about to go berserk, thinking that his son had stolen something. Seeing that Jia Huan was about to be beaten, Aunt Xiao tightly hugged the enraged Jia Zheng. Jia Shan gave it to me, I didn't steal it. Jia Huan cried loudly and took out the key hanging around his neck to open the box to prove his innocence. There are all books inside, and even if Jia Huan steals, he won't steal a box of books back. Jia Zheng took out the books inside one by one and carefully examined them. They were all useful books, and stealing a box of books did not match Jia Huan's personality. Jia Zheng put down the book and his face looked much better, showing a fatherly smile towards Jia Huan. Since it was given to you by Jia Shan, you can keep it. It's all useful books for you, read them carefully. Jia Shan will go to school soon. You are not much younger than him, and it's not decent to always be at home. In a few days, you will also go to the ethnic school and study hard with the master Jia Huan's face showed a reluctant expression. Seeing this, Jia Zheng let out a sigh. He didn't have high expectations for his youngest son, as long as he was upright and upright. Aunt Chao gathered these things into a bookshelf and placed them in a place where she could always see them. Then, she gave a warning to Jia Huan and pulled Jia Zheng out of his house. Mrs. Wang, the main courtyard of Rongqing Hall, knelt in front of the Buddha statue, closed her eyes and recited the scriptures, constantly twirling the Buddha beads in her hand. Zhou Rui's family returned from the courtyard of Aunt Chao and bent down to bow to Mrs. Wang. Madam, it stopped over there. The master asked Jia Huan to go to the ethnic school in two days. The voice of Zhou Rui's family reached Mrs. Wang's ears, neither high nor low. Mrs. Wang opened her eyes and looked up at the Buddha statue enshrined in front of her. She reached out to signal that Zhou Rui's family would help Mrs. Wang up from the cattail. Mrs. Wang sat down calmly with her Buddha beads in her hands, without any displeasure on her face. She asked Zhou Rui's family to pour her a glass of water to moisten her throat. Huan Er is also old enough to study, so I will give her five liang silver as a gift. It's my intention to be a wife. Wang instructed Zhou Rui's family to send money to Jia Huan. A surprise flashed on Zhou Rui's face. How much his wife disliked the mother and son, she knew it. Now that the little beast was going to school, his wife didn't react at all. This is abnormal. Madam, don't you worry about Jia Huan's success. Let's ride on our brother's heads. The Zhou Rui family, who couldn't guess Mrs. Wang's thoughts, felt a little anxious and didn't realize what they had said wrong. A hint of coldness flashed in Wang's eyes. What is Jia Huan riding on Bao Yu's head? Is Jia Huan compatible? The words of the Zhou Rui family angered Mrs. Wang, who looked up at the Zhou Rui family. The master's affairs are beyond your imagination. Go back and receive the punishment yourself. Upon hearing the anger in Mrs. Wang's tone, Zhou Rui's family quickly apologized. After following Wang for many years, she knew her temper the best. She was undoubtedly jumping back and forth in her dead spot just now. Mrs. Wang's face returned to calm once again. A coquettish hoof always flirts with the master, and her little beast wants to compete with her precious jade. Mrs. Wang chuckles coldly in her heart. I just heard Huaner steal something. Doubt flashed in Zhou Ruijia's eyes. Mrs. Wang glared at the Zhou Rui family with a resentful expression, secretly cursing them as idiots. Zhou Rui's family suddenly realized, with an understanding expression on their face, and bowed to Mrs. Wang with understanding. Mrs. Wang continued to pay homage to Buddha. It was just that there was such a scene. It was said that what others thought was not her the final say. 
In the early morning, the carriage of Rongwa Mansion stopped near the Guozijian. At this time, there were already many carriages parked at the entrance of the affiliated primary school of the National Academy, all of which were students who came here to study. Jia Shan walked into the Guozijian affiliated primary school of the Dakian state owned school with a servant. A servant saw Jia Shan's unfamiliar face and stopped her. This young master is a first dot time student. Jia Shan nodded and the waiter brought her to the doctor on duty today. Jia Shan said her name, and the doctor's haughty eyes scrutinized Jia Shan up and down, without even examining her. He directly placed Jia Shan in the worst yellow class of the small class. Jia Shan was very dissatisfied with this brainy doctor in her heart, but as he had just entered school and was not good at challenging her, she could only swallow this prejudice. After completing the bundle repair, Jia Shan followed the waiter to his class. Along the way, the waiter introduced him to the rules of the Guozijian affiliated primary school, which he had already understood at home. The Guozijian affiliated primary school is divided into three stages. High school and primary school. Students studying here need to meet the grade assessment before they can advance to the next grade. In addition, there is also a monthly exam, and excellent monthly exam results directly determine his class allocation. He can only skip one class for each monthly exam, and each class has different things to learn and progress. If he wants to skip to the Tianzi class, he needs to go through three months of learning to succeed. Good time flowed through her fingers, and Jia Shan wished she could give that Dr. Bang Bang two punches. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Self Eating Evil Results. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 Self Eating Evil Results The Sound of Wind and Rain, The Sound of Reading and the concern for national affairs, family affairs, and everything around the world. From the outside to the inside, the sound of students reading and the sound of teachers lecturing reached Jia Shan's ears, and Jia Shan couldn't help but let out a sigh. Get the attention of the guide waiter. What sound, what's going on? The waiter who heard Jia Shan muttering couldn't help but turn back to look. What did the young master just say? The waiter asked Jia Shan, and he shook his head. A pear that had been passed down for a hundred years and would never fade came out of his mouth, but was mistaken for what he said, which caused trouble. The waiter was leading the way ahead, feeling strange in his heart. He had just heard what he had said. At the entrance of the yellow class, classes have already begun, and the teacher is stroking his beard and reciting books with great interest. The students studying here are all playboys from different families, sent in to study, but they don't want them to cause trouble outside. The master was speaking above, while the students below didn't listen attentively and sat awkwardly, either poking or touching each other. Occasionally, they passed a small note, treating the rules of the master as meaningless, as if they were another Jia family school. The waiter knocked on the door, interrupting the teacher's lecture, and a group of mischievous children's eyes were drawn by the sound to look outside the door. Jia Shan walked in. Jia Shan has met Master. Someone had already said hello, and the teacher who was teaching glanced at Jia Shan and nodded at her. Throughout the process, he didn't say a word to Jia Shan or let her introduce himself, so he casually pointed him to a seat to sit down. Which family is he from? A mischievous child who doesn't know Jia Shan, asking someone about her identity. The teacher continued teaching unaffected, without the teacher's supervision, and gradually the mischievous whispers drowned out the teacher's lecture. The patient master's eyes were about to burst out with fire, and he could no longer hold back. Bullying others too much, you naughty children in the school are not striving for progress and continue to act recklessly. Are you going to rebel? The master threw the book onto the table, and the scene instantly quieted down. The people who had just whispered sat with low brows and pleasing eyes. Seeing this, Jia Shan couldn't help but secretly smile and was caught by the gloomy looking master. Jia Shan, get up and memorize the thousand word essay. Jia Shan stood up from the chair. The thousand character classic was a source of enlightenment for students, and compared to the three character classic, 
which was also a source of enlightenment, it was more convoluted and difficult to understand. Fortunately, he had self-taught before and had already memorized this enlightenment material proficiently. Jia Shan carried it fluently, and the master's eyes flashed with surprise. How did Jia Shan get assigned here? With no one to teach her, she was able to memorize a thousand words of literature at the age of six. Her talent was not top.notch, but she was also above average. The master cast a look of cherishing talent at Jia Shan. After Jia Shan finished reciting, master opened his eyes. Not bad, you can already read. The master praised Jia Shan and asked the key question. Jia Shan salutes. I have fully recognized it at home. After speaking, it immediately caused a commotion among everyone. Many of them had been here for almost two or three years, but they couldn't recognize all the characters. This newly arrived Jia Shan actually said that he had recognized all the characters. Sir, he lied. I know him. He is a commoner in the family and is not valued. He has not yet entered school at home, and no one has taught him how to recognize characters completely. Jia Shui followed the sound and saw that it was Chen Siki, the youngest of the Qi State Mansion. Among acquaintances, the four kings and eight nobles share the same spirit, and younger generations often arrange to meet each other, but even so, they are not without filth. The filth between Rongwa Prefecture and Qi Prefecture can be traced back to Jia Deishan. The master frowned and looked at Jia Shan with suspicion. Zhang Zhengyang, come out. To verify, the master called out a student who had been staying here for almost three years. Zhang Zhengyang stood up from among the students, a head taller than Jia Shan. Zhang Zhengyang, you have been in this school for a long time. Compare yourself to him. If you can, I will make an exception and let you graduate from the small class. Zhang Jingyang's eyes lit up and he bowed. Master, do you keep your promises? I don't need to deceive you like a mischievous child. Two pieces of paper and a pen were placed in front of Jia Shan and Zhang Jingyang. A group of mischievous children gathered to watch the excitement and set up a gambling game under the teacher's nose. While many people suppressed Zhang Jingyang, a small number tried to suppress Jia Shan. Three pieces of paper were quickly finished, and the two had not yet decided the winner. The master wanted to urinate, and there was a temporary ceasefire. A group of students surrounded Zhang Zhengyang. Zhang Zhengyang is like the leader of these students. Brother is confident in winning against Jia Shan. When asked, Zhang Zhengyang's face lit up with a determined smile, and he provocatively glanced at Jia Shan sitting in his seat in a daze. When entering school, there is not always a teacher's assessment. If he is really talented, the teacher will arrange him to be in another class. How could he come here? Brother has great ideas. Brother has great ideas. Zhang Jingyang's analysis has attracted a group of fans to pursue him. Jia Shan tugged at the corner of her mouth, fearing that it was not the water margin that he had traveled through, and that his painting style did not match the red chamber. However, he is very interested in their gambling game. If he can win Zhang Zhengyang this time, he will have the money to open a shop. Jia Shan walked up to the gambling student in front of everyone's eyes. Throw a bag of money in front of him. I bet I win. Suddenly, there was a burst of laughter, all mocking Jia Shan for being beyond her control. Jia Shan couldn't compare with anything else, but in terms of memory, he had full confidence. The lackey following Zhang Zhengyang spoke sarcastically to Jia Shan. Jia Shan glanced at the dog leg and realized that there was no need to vent her anger with the dog. The game is not over yet, and it's not certain who will win. I just hope they don't cry when the time comes. Jia Shan put down the money, sat back, and stopped paying attention to this group of people. The master came in and his match with Zhang Jingyang continued. After writing five more sheets of paper in a row, the winner was finally determined, and the master announced the result. Their elder brother, who usually gives high hopes, actually lost, and their own month's pocket money also went out. 
the student who invested in Zhang Zhenyang had a disappointed expression on his face. Zhang Zhenyang faced the group of students who supported him with shame, and he never expected that he would lose to Jia Shan. Isn't it true that Jia Shan had never attended school at home? Recalling the relationship between the founding lineage, Zhang Zhenyang realized that he had been calculated and looked at Chen Siki with his eyes. This guy must have deliberately played a game with Jia Shan and teamed up to pit their money. The student who lost money walked towards Chen Siki, who was stuck in a corner trembling. What I'm saying is true, Jia Shan really hasn't attended school. I haven't entered school, so how did Jia Shan beat me? Zhang Zhenyang questioned Chen Siki. This. Being blocked by the crowd, Chen Siki wanted to say that it was Zhang Zhenyang's fault, but Zhang Zhenyang picked him up with his clothes like carrying a chick. Chen Siki swayed her feet with a frightened expression in her eyes. My father is the Duke of Qi, you cannot hit me. The Guozijian affiliated primary school is the social school next to the Guozijian. I made some changes and assigned it to the Guozijian. I hope you don't blame me. End of this chapter.